Uh, we'll be uh, talking uh, with you in the next panel. Um, but, but Paul, you just met in San Francisco a guy from Garage 48, which is uh, a highly energetic uh, group of young people uh, who are uh, having these kind of startup competitions uh, that within 48 hours you go from idea to uh, actually uh, a functioning product, uh, usually a software platform. Uh, a, a model that is not necessarily that innovative uh, because it has been done before, uh, but uh, when I look at uh, how Garage 48 it has, itself has worked, it has exported itself to Latvia, to Finland, it did something in Ghana a couple of weeks ago. Um, and, and when I look at the people who, who build teams within Garage 48, a lot of them have a Skype background. And a lot of these people are going to places like Seedcamp. Uh, in Europe uh, to gain exposure for their idea, their uh, executive team for uh, attracting funding from across the EU and, 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 and the US. And a lot of this energy I can trace back to Skype. It was invisible at first. It was like, hey, we have Skype. Finally, Estonia is on the map to a lot of people in the world. Mm -hmm. But for us, the influence has been much more profound. And I think you know, it has finally given us a kick in the ass, a positive one. Um, because there will be many, many tiny more Skypes coming up. Some of them dying, some of them succeeding wildly. But I think Estonia, in that sense, has been incredibly lucky uh, to have that kind of a center. Well, I guess we used to call them center of excellence or centers of competence or whatever. But just to have something accidentally uh, land, like a UFO, land in Estonia and start radiating out all of this positive stuff and positive energy. Um, I'm extremely proud to be Estonian at this point because I, I see great stuff happening. If I, if I can admit, uh, I was still traveling quite often to your beautiful country five years ago. And during my first visit, I was starting to be very jealous because I discovered the. <clears throat> Maybe there was the reason of Skype technology in your country, but uh, internet was f so popular and every corner of this, of this country can use this. You've got direct free access to the internet. And I also have been a little bit shocked when I've heard that your uh, election was also, in, uh, also in your country was used only via internet. So uh, I discovered there is a still niche and I, I hope that our country is in this a leading country in this region, but unfortunately, probably because of the Skype technology and the, the example of improving the country, um, yeah, that was the truth. That's I think there's also a lesson in there for other mm -hmm. small countries and, uh, as, and also small companies. Um, mm -hmm. the, the Estonian lesson, if, if you, know, you might call it that, is that we always, we had very few resources, very few people. Uh, the whole IT industry um, employs, let's say, three, 4,000 engineers. Skype employs 400 of them, which is 10% of the entire, uh, entire country's available talent in that field. So you could never have the luxury that, for example, uh, Sweden had, where you know, to, to create the first version of Skype, four guys sat down. Um, they spent, uh, I think they, they spent three or four months to come out with the uh, first uh, internationally available, publicly available version of Skype. In Sweden, it would have taken 30 engineers, 10 middle managers, and probably a year. Um, so, you know, you just basically get down to it, you get stuff done because you don't have the luxury of enormous pools of talent or enormous pools of capital, and you just learn to make do. Um, online banking is something that, uh, that got started in the mid-90s in Estonia um, as an experiment. You could go online and you could transfer money uh, internationally. To this very date, I have a couple of accounts in the US, Wells Fargo and Chase. I can't do that. I can only move money from one account uh, in that bank to the other or set up something pretty complicated to have my uh, utility, bill, utility bills taken care of. Um, uh, and there was mobile banking. You could uh, pay uh, by SMS, I think, at the, in, in the late 90s or early 2000s uh, for, for parking. Uh, but yes, parking was the word. But there's also the danger that we got a lot of praise. Uh, hey, you know, you, you declare most of your taxes online. I think about 90 plus percent of our taxes are all declared online. Uh, mobile parking, uh, now mobile uh, or, or internet-based elections with uh, chipped ID cards. But these were the success stories that the rest of the world fed back at us. And we got really complacent and lazy. So I think, you know, six years ago, let's say, um, it really felt like the dark ages because we, we had gotten kind of embarrassed and, and tired of our old ancient success stories that everybody kept clapping at, except for ourselves. We're like, okay, we're in NATO, we're in the EU, um, 
we have uh, Skype, we have all these mobile and internet applications. What's next? What do we do? And then there was a few years of confusion and, 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 and kind of self-reflection and trying to figure out what it is. And then from unknown quarters, from Skype and then a couple of other companies, um, this incredible entrepreneurial energy and talent started feeding out and, and raising the entire country. Robert? Uh, can I just... Um, uh, I mean, what, what I would like to point out, I mean, just, you know, because I think that it's important to understand, to, to jump out of the box uh, of understanding what, 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 what's, the, what's the name of the game. So you, before you said, uh, just going back to the, sorry, to the original, you said uh, Dormeo is still a mattress. Absolutely, of course it's a product. But why we are successful with, with the mattress? And not because other people cannot, companies, you have thousands of these mattresses on Estonia. Uh, we have plenty of competitors, for sure 100 companies there. And we came and we won. Uh, uh, same as on all, uh, um, most of other markets where we, when, where we enter. Um, what is its, its convenience that wins the customer's heart? It's convenience. And let's say, to, to give one example, concrete. When I talk with my friends and people, they don't say Sunday, they don't bring Dormeo out because telling me, Dormeo is not a topic in discussion because they're telling me you have a very good mattress. No. Uh, majority of them would come to me and would say, you know, I had a problem, but I was so happily surprised how you fixed that problem. I was so happy, you know, you have fantastic service. I didn't have any problem. You sent me the wrong mattress, but I called, people were nice, were kind in the call center, you replaced it, no question. It was, I, I, I didn't like it, it was too firm. Test us. No questions asked. Really, it's Western standards on the highest possible level. It's not any about just about also the product. R look, here, here you can see uh, the innovation outside. I spent at least I think three million euros in technological and patent uh, uh, investment inv money invested uh, in in that bike, which has I don't know at least ten patents uh, on, uh, in uh, uh, in forty markets or sixty markets uh, around the world. It's the best folding bike in the world. I bet I take any bet here. It's the best folding bike uh, that you can imagine in the world. Whether it be become whether we stay just an investment and I will lose these millions, or it will become a fantastic success, it depends. Not if I have the best product out there, but if I have the best solution, how to, uh, uh, how to convince other people that desperately need this product today, even though they don't even know about it, to adopt it. For example, and here we go back to industries. I'm talking now, my best clients are in the United States, industries which, are, which don't have any money and probably don't have any growth, uh, I assume. Public sector, transport sector, uh, railway stations. You know, but I have to provide for them solution. They don't have money to buy my bikes. But we are now working on a solution, how I will penetrate through their distribution, through their commuters, with a proper financial solution from other partners to provide them and use them as my distribution. And everybody's talking now to me, because I'm bringing them a solution, not the product, but a solution for them and for their users. And if I'll be successful with this, then we'll win big time. If we won't, uh, uh, then it will be just fantastic bike for museums. <laughs> Robert? Yes, thank you. Yeah, I wanted to ask something. Um, with, when we was talking about, about Estonia, mm -hmm. because as working in the Warsaw Stock Exchange, you're meeting and screening a lot of companies. Mm -hmm. So what do you see in Poland that now is really new, fresh, what is really growing? What are the type of companies that are being listed? And if you look also at the alternative, um, where the small companies are present. What do you see that is really happening now in Poland? Okay, as usual, in the, such like in other countries, the, they are the parts of economies which are promising, and uh, they are the companies which are uh, ready to pay for being listed in this market, and they are gaining capital, the first capital in this uh, market. And uh, I, I'm a fan of new technology, especially computer science and uh, genetics companies, and now, we can see the couple of uh, companies which have been in the baskets of uh, enter, uh, f private uh, venture capitalist funds or the, the private entities, and now they are going to be this visible more. And I think this is the um, not only the problem of capital, the, the gaining the capital, but uh, the, also the visibility and uh, the company who has a such kind of the public status. Um, there's not a problem to, to gain additional, ca additional capital. They are more uh, 
from the point of view of the banking sector or other players in the market, they are visible and they can trust them. And uh, I think they are life science, computer technology, but among of them, so there are also the companies which are typical business companies producing every, everything in the market, and they also be in this market. There is only reason not to, uh, to, 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 to go there for, for, for the money, but also the typical business can be visible in this, in this market. And I hope uh, new technologies in computer science. I think this is the trend in our, in our market now. And what if you're not a technology company? Okay, Sandy, you're not a technology company. Because mm -hmm. often we hear, like, what's growing technology, IT, um, new sciences. Where is the space for companies who are in the other industries? In, 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 in technology? No, no in other, in beyond the technology. What? Beyond, because a lot when we hear about growth, we're talking about the technology companies. And you yourself are not a technology company. So, but where do you see, like for me, for all of you, because can, coming from the different regions, so where do you see there's the opportunities for growth for other industries as entrepreneurs, which you all see a lot of opportunities? Look, as an entrepreneur, I invest in the physical products. I said it's a bike out there. Uh, I invest it in now technology, the, the latest technology uh, for mattresses. Uh, it's a Belgium, it's called Octaspring. The guys made fantastic uh, technology, which I uh, hope it will shape the, this uh, industry. Uh, the guy made uh, uh, spring out of the foam. And it's patented. I mean, fantastic. It's called Octa Spring. Uh, unbelievable. It's, uh, I'm investing in internet, uh, I said in Canadian technology. Uh, I mean, growth is it's everywhere. Problems are everywhere. Things are changing. And uh, you just have to open your eyes. And here, let's say, with the uh, last five points that Rahim made, I completely agree. Except, you know, I said money, of course, it's imp important, but I see money is everywhere. So I, I go, as Italian friend said here, you know, for a, I'm looking where the problem is and how can I fix it? And does the guy who comes to me with invention can fix certain problem and can become relevant? Um, and, um, and regarding, and here, advisors, as you mentioned, are very important. But you see, don't look classical way. Who are your advisors? Where you have to look for advisors? Anyone? You have McKinsey guys, you have you know, all these big guys and experienced guys, etc., etc. You know who are our advisors or where I want to build my strongest advisors arm and connection? Clients. Clients. Uh, customers. Mm -hmm. you, you, we are having now customer advisory boards. Mm -hmm. They know my company better than I do, okay? Because I don't buy from my company and don't have the same buying experience. We have customer advisory boards. How do we connect with them? Via internet. Where is our R&D R &D department now? It's not laboratories anymore. Let's say I'm talking about business to consumer, okay? Or even, it's not necessarily only business to consumer. Just go to Google, just Google the problems of the companies. Uh, so what we do, it's a mystery shopping. You can call, and I'm also challenging you. Please, I need, we are 30, growing 30% per year, so we have a lot of problems, you can imagine. I mean, do mystery shopping with us, give me solutions, and you'll be in business with me. On, from high tech to the products and whatever you can imagine in services. And you are in business with me. You just detect my pains and, 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 and offer me solutions. Uh, what is an R&D? So check, you can, you can just search the, the you, your client that you're interested, you can do a mystery shopping, or you can go to Google and, and, and check what are the, the claims about that company. And you will know what you have to offer. And, and, and a, a guy, uh, let's say, in the United States, extremely successful, uh, uh, all his R&D is, Googling and, and uh, listing complaints of his clients. It's called the company Europro. It's the largest uh, 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 producer of uh, steam um, cleaning products in the States, about $1 billion business. Uh, the major, he has about, I don't know, 60, 70% market share. His main R&D is, because women say it's too heavy, the bottom is not in the right position, uh, the court uh, is, uh, is too short, etc., etc. And he is fixing these things we see these engineers, they are guided by what people say on Google. On, or, I mean, on internet. It's a digital space. So just, you know, don't think classical. I mean, you know, it's, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Just open your eyes. Just think from different perspective.